What's up, everybody? I am Luke from the Master Sword Valley. Welcome back to more Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we took care of the Trouble Center, getting not only did we get ourselves a new partner in the form of Miss Mouse here, but we also got the cookbook to Zest Tea, allowing us to cook with two ingredients instead of just one. In this episode, we could make some more recipes, but I'm gonna hold off on that for now. And instead, we're gonna go and look around the harbor and ask ask what we know about people we know what they know, excuse me, about Keel Hall Key. Yeah, been a long time since we were last at the harbor. Fortunately, Lumpy isn't back uh, to tell us if his expedition here. What? Kill on key? Oh, that place is absolutely awful, I heard. Not long ago, the ship after ship went there hunting treasure, but none ever returned. I bet they met the mad end of the Pirate King's curse. Those guys were dumb. Hmm, so we're talking pirates here. Kill on key? That's the, that's that cursed island. Don't get mixed up with that place for your own sake. Oh, wow. We're learning a lot about this place. You mean the island where the treasure horde of Cortez, the pirate king, is hidden? So, you want treasure, eh? Fine. But keep an eye out for the pirate's curse, I'll get ya. Or the pirate's curse, I'll get ya. And what do you have to say about that? No matter how much I work, life never gets easier for me. Know what I mean? There's gotta be a way to go, just go poof and get rich. You know? Poof! In this day and age, yeah. Oi, you with the mustache. What's with the stink guy, eh? You got something to say? Right then, ask me anything. I'm like an encyclopedia I am. I can answer anything. Kill her key. Kill her key. Listen, mate. Don't ask me about that place. I got no need for a curse on the Pirate King. Oh, wow. So we're getting the same thing about curses and Pirate Kings. See that dit ship doctor over there? She belongs to Flavio, the merchant trader. She don't, they don't sail too often, though. Mostly he hangs on Podley's joint on the plaza. Like that. Woo! Fancy. And this is apparently no to a guy known as Flavio's. Fancy stuff here. Well, I guess let's go ahead and meet this Flavio person, because there's no other boats around here to take out there. And when and when they refer to Podleys, they're of course talking about the inn right here. The lower part of the bar right here is this place. And check this out. And what do you want, uh? Who? Me you ask about? You haven't heard of me, have you? Ah, I am called Flavio. I am, how you say, a trader. The richest man in Rogueport. A trader, not traitor. Monetary wealth gives me freedom, yes. And freedom gives me wealth of spirit. And yet, why is it that a man whose life is uncharted must always long for yet more, ah? Uh? And why is the rum always gone? What is missing from my life? The tears are of my very insides. I must know. What do I lack? <laughs> Romance? Emotion? Thrills? Money, maybe? Um, probably, th um, probably money, maybe. Money, you say, huh? Yes, there's nothing like grapefruit covered in, ah, no, foolish value, mm, not honey. <clears throat> you silly man. What you meant to say was money. Ah, but if it's money I need, I may be in good shape because I'm filthy rich. Wait, hold the horses. A great idea has struck. Yeah, I know it doesn't look quite the part of who I'm going for. Now that I'm thinking of it, I once heard of the treasure of Cortez, the Pirate King. Yes, this is the answer. Oh, such happiness for me. A hunt for pirate treasure. Why, just this, just that shrieks of romance and thrills and emotion and even money. All four options there. So it didn't matter what we chose. Do you not know the tale? The Pirate King's treasure hidden on Keelhole Key. Ah, well, tales say that the Pirate King Cortez hid his hoard of pirate booty there. For years, treasure hunters and ruffians have gone there in search of the loot. But none, not a single one of them has ever returned. Oh, the horror makes my back tingle. People are a whisper that the ghost of Cortez attacks all who seek his treasures. <laughs> it is because of those very rumors that people no longer go to Keelhole Key. But we need to go there. Well, that will not stop Flavio. That treasure is there, yes. And I'm going to prove it. For I am Flavio, trader, extraordinaire, millionaire, sailor of the seven seas, captain of the SS Flavio, not the Black Pearl. What is it that you are saying? You are also looking for a treasure here in Rogueport? Oh. oh, why talk such craziness? There isn't anything like that in this dull armpit of a town. Then why would we be here? You cannot be believing such each, each stupid rumor about treasure from street urchins spews out. No, 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 no. Oh. Now what madness comes bursting from your mouth? You have a treasure map? 
well, hand it over. Rather, I mean, <clears throat> show me. Show the captain. You are having a joke with me. This map leads straight to Kill Hall Key. You swine. You mean to tell, steal my treasure out from under me, you awful, awful man. No, no. Oh. Well, now I'm confused. You are looking for the no things known as the crystal stars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But now that I'm thinking, a star-shaped stone was said to be in Cortez's hoard. Sounds like what oh, we need. Perhaps I could sell it for a staggering amount of cash. Yes, that would be... Ah, stop such thoughts, Fabio. What you need is romance, thrills, and emotions. You already have enough money. I cannot ignore what this business before me suggests. This must be fate at work. Flavio shall go with you to kill Hulky. Of course, the crystal star is yours, yes, but the rest of that treasure is mine. Oh, huh? You must repeat that. Flavio's ears are plugged. You have no ship. <laughs> you unfortunate foolish man. Do you not know who I am? I will have a ship ready in no time, and we will be massive and glorious. Splendid, splendid, splendid. Let us prepare, preparate, begin preparations immediately, shall we? I will volunteer myself as I an open leader. Yes, and you will be captain. I, you shall be Captain Mario Sparrow. Danger and adventure and tickles my nostrils. Come to the harbor right away. You, you shall never forget this day that you, that you almost got away with ruining Captain Mario Sparrow. Anyways, <laughs> I, I've been waiting for this, this moment of the game because I love talking in those silly voices because, I mean, I can't help, I can't help it. I love, I really like, I really have a fascination with pirates and I really love Pirates of the Caribbean and, and yeah, I really love it. Anyway, looks like he's got himself a crew, a crew boarded on his ship. Awesome. And who's that jerk up there? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so it is you. Ah, uh, well, sadly, a slight problem seems to have popped up. But feast your eyes on this outrageously fantastic ship. She is a fine vessel, no? She is the SS Flavion, the queen of countless ships in my personal fleet. Well, hopefully it doesn't get, it doesn't have a curse. It has, it's not cursed like a certain other ship we know of. The royal majesty of her hull, the pomp and circumstance, none can compare to her. Ah, behold the elegant curve of her prow. She cuts to, to the very soul. Don't you agree? But she is not just a beauty. She is a savage beast on the waters, top am tops among sailboats. But above all, I tell you, this proud ship can... Uh, what was the problem again? The problem that has sprung up. Yeah, we had to remind you of that. Get out of your funk. I had completely forgotten about it. The SS Flavion, she bewitches me. Yes, well, here's the issue. We have no navigator. He ran off, the dog. The navigator, of course, is a highest rank helmsman. They steer ships, you know. Now, here's the real problem. The waters around Kiral Key are deathly dangerous. We need an absurdly skilled helmsman for our navigator. It is a, uh, how you say, <clears throat> a pickle. Oi, Flavio. Heard you talking there, sir. If you don't mind me saying, I might have a solution. Do not tease me, Papatch. You can solve the problem, then just spit it out already, Savvy. Well, sir, I've heard a talk of a famed, no, a legendary sailor living in Rogueport. Yeah, I think he's called Admiral Bobbery, a salty old sea dog by all accounts. But he said to have helmsman touched, sir. He can make any ship bow to his will. Thing is, there ain't a soul or what's seen of him on the seas of late. Boss of boom, problem solved. Let us scout out this Bobbery fellow and get him on board. Hmm? As is customary, my captain will handle the negotiations. That would be you, Mario. I thought a captain... I, If I know anything from a certain other sailor in another universe, any captain worth his salt puts his ship before anything else. So if I'm the captain here, shouldn't I be worried about the ship? <clears throat> anyway, that does sound fair to everyone, does it not? No complaints, aye, sir. If this, if aye, this aye, is from your aye, ship, shouldn't he be plan. captain? Sure thing. Then it is decided. You must find this Bobbery and bring him here. Our fortune sails with you. <laughs> It sails with us. Anyways. I guess... I guess let's just go looking around and see what we can we know about this so-called Admiral Bobbery. If anything else, we can go to ask Frankly if he might know of this Bobbery fellow. What do you know, Frankly? Bobbery? That old sea dog lives in the East Side House right next door. They say he was a great and important sailor long ago. Well. Good thing Frankly knows everything about this town. It's like he lives right next door. And unfortunately, it's locked. Well, 
then we might, then I guess we have to go in from the outside. Yoshi, or er, Silk, climb us over, thank you. Look, we already got the star piece, which is good. Climb up, up here, and it looks like this chimney connects to this house over here, so roll up into a tube, and we are Santa Claus! What do you blokes want? Hello. Admiral Bobbery, I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Now, if you please. Drop the axe, Super Stash. <laughs> Great name for him. We already found out that you're Admiral Bobbery. Harumph! What puppycock? Tell me, what would you want with me if I were this chap? Oh, you say your ship needs a navigator and you want me to do the job, hmm? So sorry, but you'll have to take a look elsewhere. I shall set sail upon the sea nevermore. But that's just not cool. You want to see me beg or something? Is that it? You have to come along. Only you can get us to safely to kill Hawkey. Awfully sorry, dear boy. But when I say no, what I mean is no. Now away with ye. Well, I hate to say it, buddy, but we're going to go into your study right here because they happen to have a shine spray just tucked away in your study. So he's being stubborn. I shall set sea upon the sea, never more. Away with ye. Hmm. What's the next move, Chief? The salty dude's going nowhere fast. Can't figure this guy out. What's his beef with the ocean anyway? Know what we ought to do? Find someone who go find someone who knows what the dude's deal is. Well, we can always try the professor again. Admiral Bobbery won't go to sea. That's a setback. Hmm. I don't know the men myself, so I don't know what to tell you, unfortunately. But I'd be willing to bet that Podley knows a thing or two. He works at the Inn's Cafe. So, so everything seems to point towards the cafe. We met Flavio there. Now the bartender seems to know something about that. So I guess let's go ahead and ask him something. But now that, but since we have gotten that uh, shine sprite in the uh, in Bobbery's hut, I now I wanted to save that. I wanted to save getting the rest of them, which only there's only one more for until after we had gotten gotten that one in Bobbery's hut. If we go into this house right here, wrong house. It's this one with the circle window. That's it. There we go. As you notice, there, there's a little alcove right here. Now that we can roll up into a ball and go through. And out, out back here, there happens to be yet another shine sprite. So that leaves us with three shine sprites here. There are no star pieces in Rogue Port after Chapter Four. So unfortunately, we don't. We still don't have another partner that we can upgrade yet. So maybe we'll get one soon. I'm not teasing anything. I swear I'm not. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Wink, wink. Anyways, let's go talk to Podley now. Hey, barkeep. I don't want to drink. I, I need. I need to know some information. You say Bobbery won't go to sea, huh? Well, can't say that surprises me. The real question is, are you folks really sure you want Bobbery back on the water? We need a navigator. Ooh. Oh, is that it? Now I see. You want to mount an expedition to kill Hall Key. Rough seas out there. Most sailors won't meet their ends. Not old Bobbery, though. Fact of the matter is, Admiral Bobbery's tail is sad. Horribly sad, actually. You'll probably end up crying, but I'll tell it to you if you really want me to. Yes, I can take it. In that case, get ready. Bobbery's tale of woe goes something like this. Bobbery was once married. He had a wife of enduring beauty named Scarlet. The two of them were madly in love. They sort of love reserved for fairy tales. Now, Bobbery was a renowned sailor, so he was away from home for long periods. Scarlet never complained, though, and always waited faithfully for Bobbery's return. And Bobbery, his eye never drifted. He loved only Scarlet, truly and deeply. So they lived and found happiness where they could. And all was good for a time. But all, not all good things can last. It was a particularly icy winter when it happened. Scarlet fell ill. A virus? A passing cold? No one knew, but it soon turned serious. Bobbery, a sea on a, sea on a long, lonely voyage, knew nothing of his bride's suffering. By the time he returned, Scarlet had succumbed. She was gone. Bobbery, of course, blamed himself. My loving wife perished because of me. If I were not at sea, I could have nursed her to hell. I could have saved her. He was overcome with such thoughts. They tormented him always, haunting his sleep. He had never gone out to sea since. Gee, what a downer. 
I guess that's a pretty good reason for hitting the ocean. You all know this tale now, so tell me, do you still want to return to the sea? We really have no choice. We need to get the Keelhole Key. Very well, I understand. If you're that determined, then I'll give you this. Wait, 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 what are you giving us? What? The letter Scarlet wrote to Bobbery on her death. Why were you hanging on to this? On her deathbed, Scarlet wrote Bobbery a final letter. You hold it in your hands. I don't know what's written inside, but I can tell you what she told me as she was lay dying. If I should succumb to this plague, and if my love should blame himself for my death, then give this letter to him so he may hear my voice. It was her last request. But when I saw Bobbery in misery trying to forget the pain he, as he mourned his wife, I just couldn't bring myself to present this letter to him. I regretted it ever since. Please. Take this letter and do the deed I was to Carly to do. Take it to Bobbery. Listen, Podley, thanks a ton. We'll deliver this thing. You feel better, okay? Let's roll. Oh, yeah. So he kept this letter here, even though he was scared of what would what would happen to Bobbery. He still kept the letter, keeping Bobbery in pain this whole time. I didn't re read what his partner said right there, but seriously, why would you do that? I guess it's convenient for us now that we. We have Bobbery here. He can take us to Keelhaul. Uh, we can get to Keelhaul Key with him. But still, why would he keep this letter from him? What is wrong with him? I, I know he said that he was afraid to do so, but still, that is just rude. Anyways, we had something for you. What? Oh, my Blabberton's beard. Not you again. No matter how many times he entrapped me, my stance is firm. Now away with ye. Pardon. A letter, you say? For me? What? Scarlet! This is Scarlet handwriting! Scarlet, my love. My love, if you're reading this letter, then I'm no longer by your side. Because fate has stepped between us, I have decided to write you this letter. If you were reading this, I have passed away while you are at sea. I can only assume that you will blame yourself for it, my sweet Bobbery. Although my life was short, you gave me more than a lifetime's worth of joy. Although you will mourn, I beg that you remember that time I love. Like love is a tide. You are one with the sea, as you are one with me. Do not lose both your life's loves. Time is time, like love is a tide. You are one with the sea, as you are one with me. Uh, a thousand pardons, but may I have a moment alone, if you please. Again, why did he he kept the letter? Because he was scared of the repercussions that would happen between Bobbery and him? Really? Yes, love. I was happy. My sweet, sweet Scarlet. I love you still. Now then, you were looking for a navigator, I believe. Bound for Kilhal Key. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Harumph! If you think an old sea bomb like me is what you need, then not shove off. Admiral Bobbery, yes! So we got Bobbery to join us finally. Awesome, we got our navigator. The ship's in the harbor, hmm? I must leave her, let us inspect her before we leave. I shall meet you there. All right, we got the dude by our side, sweet. I say that's a good point to end things off of. Next time on Paper Mario, the thousand year door. After another email, let's go, I guess I'll go and check that real quick. Uh, Petuni. Uh, so, oh, so this is the uh, email that you get uh, where she has her, has the mystic egg. You can go get it from her. I'm going to go get collect more mystic eggs for more recipes, but that'll be later. Anyway, next time on Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door, we'll meet Bobbery down at the harbor and shove off for Keelhaul Key. All right. See you guys then.